Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a molecular and structural biologist, and I'm back to debunk some more COVID-19 misinformation. Today, we'll be talking about Dr. Christiane Northrup. Dr. Northrup is probably one of the worst COVID deniers out there spreading COVID-19 misinformation. But before we get into that, I'll let her introduce herself. Okay, my name is Dr. Christiane Northrup. I'm a board certified OBGYN physician trained at Dartmouth Medical School, Tufts New England Medical Center. I'm a former clinical professor of OBGYN at the University of Vermont College of Medicine. I'm the author of three New York Times bestselling books, including Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom, The Wisdom of Menopause, and Goddesses Never Age. I've done eight highly successful public television specials. I was on the Oprah Winfrey Show. 10 different times and all the numerous TV shows like Dr. Oz and Rachel Ray and NBC Nightly News and uh, all of the rest of it. Yeah, sure, whatever. That all sounds very impressive. But as I say on this channel all the time, I don't care if you got your degree from Harvard or the Northeast Clown Institute. What you say is either right or wrong and your credentials don't change that. So I'm going to fact check it just the same. Amazing. So for anybody uh, who, who says that uh, we're, we're talking now to someone that's not medically qualified, you can forget it. That is an amazing list of qualifications. So thank you so much for that. And as we're about to find out, her qualifications mean absolutely nothing. Seriously, strap in for this one. It's going to be weird. Uh, this, COVID, this COVID vaccine, mm -hmm. can you tell us what we do know about it and what you, from your experience, fear for the people that may take it? Yes, there's never been a vaccine like this. It's an RNA vaccine. It is uh, what's called a trans infection. It will fundamentally change people's DNA. This is across the board just a big no. This is not how mRNA vaccines work. They do not affect your DNA at all. Here is how an mRNA vaccine actually works. mRNA is what you get when your DNA is transcribed. This basically means that the information stored in your DNA is copied into a different form and then sent out of the nucleus. Once sent out of the nucleus where your DNA is stored, it is read by the ribosome. The ribosome reads the information in the mRNA in order to produce a functional protein. mRNA vaccines take advantage of this natural process by delivering one piece of mRNA that codes for a protein from the SARS-CoV-2 virus, for example. Once the mRNA is delivered to your cells, it'll start producing this one viral protein. This one viral protein, by the way, is not the virus itself. It's not enough to make you sick. It's just a piece of the virus. But now that your cells are producing this foreign protein, your immune system is going to recognize it as foreign which will enable it to begin producing antibodies against that viral protein. This will allow your body to be ready to fight the real thing, which includes that protein that it now recognizes when it encounters it. That is how an mRNA vaccine grants you immunity. The mRNA and the protein that it produces are both transient. The mRNA will be degraded after re being read by the ribosome for some time, and proteins will naturally degrade over time. There is nothing permanent about this vaccine except, hopefully, the immunity. And what I don't like about it even more than the usual thing about the toxic uh, metals that are in vaccines that make our bodies literally into an antenna with 5G. I told you, it gets weird. I mean, clearly she hasn't really thought about this. Why wouldn't the iron and other natural metals already in our body already make us an antenna for 5G? It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, this one has the usual um, non-human DNA, like, you know, monkeys, maybe fetal cells, pigs, whatever. And so it begins to make us what's called chimers, C-H-I-M-E-R, I think she means chimeras, which refers to people who have multiple different genomes in their body. For example, someone who gets a bone marrow transplant has their genome and the genome of a donor. But anyway, in this case, she is totally wrong about vaccines. Not only do vaccines grown using animal cells not do this to your body, 
but mRNA vaccines aren't even grown in animal cells. You can produce them using molecular techniques in a lab without any live cells. So she's already wrong on multiple accounts here, and it's clear to me that she's just using scare tactics to try and make people afraid of taking a vaccine when really there's no reason to be. What is worse, though, is that um, there is a patent and work that they've done at MIT to make a dye, and the patent of the dye is called luciferase, and under a light, you'd be able to see who was vaccinated, who wasn't. Mm, no, this is wildly inaccurate. What she's referring to is a study that was done at MIT where the investigators were looking at how to use microneedles as a way to deliver vaccines into a non-human primate. I'll link this paper in the description so you can read it yourself, but the only reason they were using luciferase in this context is to visualize that they actually delivered virus into the tissue that they were testing. So they wouldn't be using luciferase in a real vaccine, they're just trying to make sure that their method actually delivers stuff to the right layer of the skin. That's all. By the way, luciferase is an enzyme. It's the enzyme that makes fireflies glow. And what she's describing here of somehow adding it to a vaccine, putting it under our skin, and using a light to tell whether or not we've been vaccinated is completely made up. So in the context of COVID, here is how scientists think they can use luciferase to tell whether or not someone has antibodies against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. This is an experiment that's done in a dish, not in your body. The scientists can just take some serum from you, and the serum is the part of your blood that holds all of the antibodies. Once they do this, they can apply it to these cells that are also infected with a specially engineered SARS-CoV-2 virus. And if your antibodies are there to bind to this SARS-CoV-2 virus, then it will not be able to light up with luciferase. This is not described as a system that will let you just test anybody to see who has been vaccinated and who hasn't. It's a tool for scientists to visualize whether or not antibody responses have been successful. So again here, Dr. Northrup is just trying to scare you through using lies and bad information. And the deal is to store your biometric information, because this vaccine will have nanoparticles, nanocrystalline uh, particles that are actually little robots. Yep, I told you. It just gets weird. No, these mRNA vaccines will not have robots. Like I said earlier, this mRNA needs to get into your cells in order to actually work. But things don't just pass through your cell membranes that easily. No, the researchers have a solution to that, and that is packaging the mRNA into nanoparticles. And these nanoparticles are just containers. They're packages that hold the mRNA. It's not going to hurt your cells, and your cells are easily going to be able to break it down through natural processes. It's not going to stay in your body. What's even more concerning is that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on March 26, 2020, applied for a patent patent number 060606, to take that biometric data, give you a barcode and connect each of us to cryptocurrency so that we would become literally um, slaves to the system. Like everything, it would be the end of privacy, the end of freedom. <laughs> okay, so, so what she's talking about here is a real patent patent 060606, filed by Microsoft, and the patent has absolutely nothing to do with nanochips, microchips, or vaccines in general. Here is what the patent actually says. The patent just suggests technology that will collect data from a user's smart devices, such as their phone, their computers, or their watches. Nowhere in the patent does it mention nanorobots or microchips, by the way. Once this data is collected, the user could be rewarded for having completed certain tasks or done certain activities, and they would be rewarded in the form of cryptocurrency. That's it. It has nothing to do with vaccines, nothing to do with COVID, nothing to do with nanobots. This is a virus from which 99.9% .9 of people recover. So I would ask, 
why do we need anything like this? No, actually, if you look at the data as of today, November 14th, approximately 2.5% of people who catch the virus end up dying. That is a case fatality ratio. We can also estimate an infection fatality ratio, which is going to be lower, but that is based on incomplete data, and we won't actually have an accurate number as to what percentage of people who catch this virus actually end up dying until the pandemic is long over. The point is that it is both false and misleading to say that any percentage of people who catch this virus end up dying. That information is just incomplete across the board. It also misses the reality that 1.31 million people worldwide have already died from this virus, and cases are skyrocketing. So, of course, we want a vaccine. The press and the other side are saying, oh, don't listen to these doctors and these nonsense people, these quacks that say there's nanoparticles, there's hydrogel, there's this luciferase in that. It's nonsense. They're barefaced lying to the public. Yes, they are. And if you'd like, I could send you the papers from MIT where they're talking about this, um, you know, so that you have the references. Yeah, I'll also say don't listen to this doctor. She is spouting nonsense. And I have the reference in the description if you want to check it out for yourself and see that she is lying. This COVID vaccine is like nothing we've seen before. Am I correct in that? That is correct. Nothing. We have no experience with this at all. A nanoparticle is a tiny, tiny, tiny robot. <laughs> no, that technology literally doesn't exist. And she goes on to repeat this same weird, wrong information for the next 30 minutes. So I think we're going to leave this episode at that. Well, Dr. Northrup has a wide reach. She is very influential, especially on social media. And as we can see here, she has no idea what she's talking about, and she's just using scare tactics to misinform her audience. So if you liked this video and found it informative, make sure to share it to her Facebook pages and to her followers to make sure that they know that they should not be listening to her. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch me next Tuesday where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.